A mountain of DNA evidence suggests that woolly mammoths and other megafauna survived on mainland North America until as recent as 3,900 years ago. And DNA is revealing this. Now, woolly mammoths have survived in North America thousands of years longer than scientists previously thought. Vials of Alaska permafrost reveal this. And the studies have been ongoing for over a year, and the papers have been published in the last four months. The most recent you're looking at. Now, the hairy beast that might have persisted into what is now the Yukon in Canada until around 5,000 years ago, 5,000 years longer than ex experts previously estimated. In fact, the October paper shows that the DNA existed until around 3,900 years ago, and we'll get to that at the end of the podcast. But this new su study suggests that snippets of mammoth DNA that were found in vials of frozen dirt that had been stored and forgotten in a laboratory freezer for decades are now revealing that megafauna existed in remote regions where it was probably difficult to hunt them until as recent as, well, 4,000 years ago. Now, organisms are constantly shedding cells through their life. For instance, a person sheds roughly 40,000 skin cells per hour on average, meaning we are constantly ejecting bits of our DNA into the surroundings. This is also true of other life forms. Non-human animals, fungi, plants, and microbes are constantly leaving microscopic breadcrumbs, trails everywhere. Most of this genetic detritus doesn't linger in the environment, though. Soon after being discarded, the vast majority of DNA bits are consumed by microbes. Now, the fraction of the shed DNA that does, does remain might bind to a small bit of mineral or sediment and be, pre be preserved, especially in the Arctic where it's cold and there are no microbes to eat them. Though only a tiny proportion of what was initially shed remains centuries or eons later, it can nevertheless provide a window into a vanished world teeming with strange creatures. Some people use this fact to the detriment of science and the benefit of the YouTube channel, like Mud Fossil University, claiming incorrectly that DNA found in sedimentary rock equals a fossil of that animal. It's so childish, it, it pales in comparison to science. Whereas scientists, we know that this DNA material in skin cells is blowing all over the world and should be present in all depositional environments, including, including lake deposits, rivers, oceans, etc. As long as you're near the animal shedding the skin, you'll get the DNA. In fact, in a tiny fleck of dirt is the DNA from an entire ecosystem. And paleoclimatologists and paleontologists like myself have known this for decades. Now, soil samples were taken from permafrost in the central Yukon. Many of the samples dated to the Pleistocene-Holocene transition 14,000 to 11,000 years ago period marked by rapid changing climate conditions in which many large mammals, such as saber-toothed cats and mammoths, mastodons, vanished from the fossil record, or so we thought. The DNA fragments in the samples were small, often no larger than 50 letters or base pairs. However, on average, they were able to isolate roughly 2 million DNA fragments per sample. And by analyzing DNA from soil samples of known ages, they indirectly observed the evolution of ancient ecosystems over this turbulent period. Now, the main advantage to studying ancient DNA is quite simple. Researchers can observe organisms that tended not to fossilize well, like mammoths. 
After all, an animal has only one body, and the odds of it fossilizing are not that great, especially if it's a mammal. Less than one-tenth of one percent of all mammals are hypothesized to have been fossilized. It's almost none of them. So there is that. Now on top of that, you have to find it. You have to find the fossil. And, and there's just such vast regions that that's probably, well, unlikely. But that same animal constantly ejected innumerable amounts of DNA into the environment throughout its lifetime in that region. So finding the DNA is highly likely, in fact, highly probable. And with today's scientific devices and measurement techniques, DNA co connection is the science of the future as far as paleontology is concerned. Now, the soil samples, which span a period from 30,000 to 5,000 years ago, revealed that mammoths and likely horses persisted into the Arctic environment much longer than previously thought. And this is an Arctic environment with a lot less ice than previously was thought as well, because horses don't like to run around on snow, trust me. Mammoths and horses were in steep decline by the Pleistocene-Holocene transition, and this is the Younger Dryas event. The, D the DNA data suggests this, but they didn't disappear. They didn't go extinct. And man didn't overhunt them, but they did disappear in great numbers all at once during that cosmic catastrophe. Now, an earlier study published in October in the Journal of Nature, suggested that some mammoths survived on isolated islands away from human contact until as recently as 3,900 years ago. However, the new study is the first to determine that small populations of mammoths coexisted with humans on the mainland of North America well into the Holocene as recently as 5,000 years ago. Megafauna extinctions from this era have largely been blamed on two explanations, and you know both of them. Human paleo hunters, boom, overhunting them and causing them to go extinct at the same time a cosmic catastrophe occurred. Or climate change. <laughs> and both of them have been milked ad infinitum over the last few years. But this new study changes the focus away from the two-pitted debate that has plagued paleontology forever, for 50 years or more, 100 years, thankfully. And in fact, the natives coexisted with these megafauna and lived well, prosperous lives or else we wouldn't be here. Now, the team's research provides evidence that the extinction of North American megafauna is much more nuanced. And you're looking at the nuance here. There's no doubt that the animals were under pressure from both human hunters and rapid changing climate back in the Younger Dryas. There was a cosmic catastrophe that had just unfolded the question is, how much were the hunted and whether or not that was truly the tipping point? Based on this research, it's probably both. During the Younger Dryas cosmic catastrophe, megafauna populations were reduced by 65% based on all studies. But some of them might have made it through, just like humans, on isolated regions where it was safe where they could shelter in place and make it through the transition. This is what we call evolution, survival of the fittest, which is happening recently in our history. Most youngsters and young students don't know about this and how significant it is on the, well, the evolution of our history 
the history of man. This is the most significant struggle we've had in recent times. And we're entering the next cosmic catastrophe. They happen regularly, periodically, like a clock. And well, back to the topic. What is the topic? The topic is this. We've been lied to. Mammoths and other giant creatures of the Ice Age, such as woolly rhinos, survived longer than scientists thought. Much longer. Eons longer. Coexisting with humans for tens of thousands of years before they vanish for good. And that's according to the results of an ambitious 10-year research project that just began this year. It has been analyzing DNA from hundreds of soil samples across the Arctic. Now, the scientists involved in the project collected 535 samples of permafrost and sediment from frozen lakes, often in extremely cold locations from across Siberia, Alaska, and Canada, Scandinavia, and 73 locations where the remains of mammoths have been found. An analysis of this DNA contained the soil showed that mammoths were living in mainland Siberia 3,900 years ago, long after the Great Pyramids of Giza were built in Egypt and the megaliths of Stonehenge were erected. Most woolly mammoths were previously thought to have died off 10,000 years ago, except for a very tiny population that survived on remote islands of Siberia. But this is bunk, and has been, well pretty much shut down with this paper, the collapse of the mammoth steppe in central Yukon as revealed by ancient environmental DNA, which we'll link you below. Now, here's the funny thing. Some of these creatures are so well preserved because they were flash frozen during the Younger Dryas event and only now being re-emerging on the surface that they contain large amounts of DNA. And that means in the modern world of CRISPR, that creating a hybrid woolly mammoth is happening now. It may have already happened, and the information didn't just leak out yet. But mark my words, in a year or less, a hybrid woolly mammoth will be alive on Earth. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. When we are schooling you on the freshest science on Earth and the fact that megafauna walked amongst us just 3,900 years ago. Ho, ho. Happy New Year. Be safe. We love you. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people. And leave a comment or question below. We love to get to the bottom of it.